son suffered from a serious illness that no one, not even Jesus' disciples, had been able to cure. I believe, help my unbelief, the father cried. His son was healed. My journey of faith may not always be straight and smooth. I may at times reach the limit of my human ability to believe. In those moments, I surrender to the divine presence within me. Affirming, I believe, opens my mind and heart to the faith expressed in the life and ministry of Jesus. Through divine presence, the Christ in me, I believe and find the answers to my prayer. And from Mark 9, verse 24, immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Today we take a path to discover the difference between strength and that which weighs us down. And as we move along this path, we bring with us all of our armor, all that protects us. Some of it is good, and perhaps some of it is not. So as you try to stand tall and walk with clarity and focus on this path, I ask you to think about what it is that's making your steps slower slumping your shoulders. Think about the extra weight you are carrying around with you. Is it anger? Is it lack of self-worth? Depression? Anxiety. What is it that you carry on this path, this journey, every day <coughs> that you think is protecting you, keeping the world out, not letting anyone, anyone in? to see for the truth you feel 
is not the truth and love and beauty of who and what you are. But as we move through this path, it becomes lighter, wider, and brighter. And there is a feeling within the universe that you're walking into as you begin to be next to a neighbor, a friend, a loved one. And the universe is urging you through silent words, a gentle breeze, the warmth of the sun. And it's saying, let go of one thing. You don't need this armor. go of anger. Leave it behind and move towards the light. <clears throat> Let go of depression. It doesn't serve you. Let go of even excess weight. For when you release the weight of your mind, the body automatically reduces in strength stability, focus, clarity. What else? Is it a grudge you're holding? Shake it off. Shake your shoulders right now. Shake it off. Begin to stand taller. Feel leaner. Feel blessed. And as this path gets wider and wider, notice that hands are reaching out and people are holding hands and there's an energy and vibration of love radiating through this line of people who are understanding. To be strong means to stand tall, to be loyal, to be consistent, to have integrity, to be honest. There is no need to be shrouded in armor. There's no need to keep the world out and keep the beauty of who you are inside. There is only love. And as this loving group <coughs> Now, very slowly and in peace, with all the weight off of each one's shoulders, gently, slowly, with acceptance and love, filling your hearts. And when you're ready, come back to this room. Welcome back. So we know that in unity, there are 12 powers. And these 12 powers um, are the 12 fundamental aspects of divine nature. They are divine ideas, and they constitute the pattern of perfection within us. We already know that divine mind is one and the only reality uh, that's formed the reality of how our lives flow. 
And as I said in January, each month we were going to take one of these powers and speak about it and learn more from, it, from the nature of them. So last month we spoke about the first power, faith. And if you remember, the first apostle Jesus called Peter uh, was Peter represented faith and faith in things spiritual. And Jesus uh, called Peter the faith in God apostle because he believed in everything. So we begin in this religious experience or this journey that we're on, the spiritual journey of knowing that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And clearly what that means is we have faith when we put on the light switch that the lights are going to go on. We have faith in electricity. We know that. So what we're seeing, saying is we have faith in something invisible. We really don't know how, unless you're an engineer or something, how all that works. I don't know how all that works. But all I do know is that, that it does work. So the Bible states it this way. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And it's really easy to have faith in all of those things, but then we kind of waver a little bit when it comes to having faith in a divine power or God or divine wisdom, whatever you choose to call that. So moving then from that faith, we have to have faith before we could possibly go through the other uh, 11 powers. So the second power that we're going to speak about today is strength. And strength uh, comes from stability and steadfastness. And more than an endowment of the spiritual awareness, uh, the second apostle, Andrew, he stood for strength. And, you know, every time I was writing that or thinking about that, my posture just got better and I became six foot feet tall. So this was really great. I love the increase that you get when you stand for strength because it's a power. And the important thing to realize about the power of strength, it's not for strength alone. It's for stability and steadfastness. So by realizing that it exists in their presence and calling into existence, then we bring the expression of all that power within us. So we have that power of faith and we're, we're getting locked into that and then we bring that power of strength in and we realize that that power is indeed within us. And Einstein said this, and I love this quote, nothing happens unless something moves. Nothing happens unless something moves. So what this means to us is that we have to take action. We have to keep spiraling to a higher consciousness, knowing that there's always movement. And you know that I always say, uh, well, in religious science, treat and move your feet or pray and then take a step forward. You just don't pray and then say, okay, like, okay, God, make this happen for me. It doesn't work that way. You have to move your feet. So most importantly then about the movement is the movement of consciousness. Everything is consciousness. So what this entire di dialogue means that we have to keep moving into a deeper consciousness to discover who and what we are. And in unity, this is called regeneration, which is the process by which we reestablish our awareness with our true identity. So we have all of these words, and you go, oh, all these words, I don't know what they mean. And they're so simple. So regeneration, the process by which we reestablish our awareness with our true identity. That's all, that's simple. It means that within our five senses, we have consciousness, but when we go to that higher realm, we reassert the power of the Christ mind, and that's what we want to do. We want to reassert that which Jesus gave us, the Christ mind, the Christ education. And our true identity shows up when we wake up when we're in peace and in stillness in a place where we see and hear and love from the oneness of spirit. There's a song I love, and, and I got to talk to, to Louie about it because I need to do a talk about it. And uh, Sleep is the new awake, or awake is the new sleep. I don't know which it is, but it's a great song, and it goes to what I'm saying here. Our true identity shows up when we wake up. So as we look at this second power, then strength, I ask myself, well, what does it mean to me? And the more I thought about it over the past couple of weeks, I believe for me it's about strength of character. It's not about physical strength. 
It's about strength of character. Who are you? Honesty, strength of character, stability, respect, loyalty, consistency, all of those things are strength of character. So Jesus wrote this, and it's really, really interesting, and it took a while to, to work with this and to really get what he was saying. Listen, when the strong man, fully armed, guardeth his own court, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him and taketh from him his whole armor, wherein he trusted and divided the spoils. So the apostle Andrew was uh, designated as the strong man. So the strong man fully armed as Jesus referred to in the above passage, is the strength and stability in man, the strong man fully armed, armed with all of the Christ consciousness within. The natural man is about physical strength. The strong man is about spiritual strength. When, s s strength, okay, I got that word out. Okay, so what are we really talking about here? What does all of this mean? The stronger than he who takes away the whole armor in which the strong man is trusted is spiritual strength. What does this mean? Here's what we're talking about. How many of you know the story of David and Goliath? Okay, great. So this is what we're talking about. This chapter opens up as Israel and the Philistines are facing uh, off in battle. David's older brothers were with the army in Israel, and, and David was at home tending the sheep. David's father sent him out to the war to bring food and get news about the war. David arrived at the battlefield to find his brother and the rest of the Israel army, Israeli army covering with fear from the taunts of Goliath of Goth. Goliath was the champion of the Philistine army, and he was nine feet tall. He spoke words that angered David Goliath was claiming that God of the Israelites was not able to help them in battle. So, whatever fear David may have had was secondary to his righteous indignation and the words of the giant, how dare he say that God of the Israelites couldn't help them in battle. David was angered and he aimed to stand up for what was right. He ignored the potential danger. David trusted in God to help him fight Goliath. David trusted more in God than in the weapons of war. David said he would fight the giant. So he was a young man. Um, he had experienced enough danger in his life, and, but he knew. Remember what I've always said, when you know you know, that's when you know. He knew. He knew that God was in control and would protect him in this battle. So the king, Saul, offered David a royal armor, all of these things, and he offered him the army, and uh, David refused. He refused the armor to protect himself. He refused this kind and generous offer. More than likely, David simply trusted in God. He knew more about God than the armor that he could put around himself to protect himself. So after leaving Saul, David ran towards Goliath. He was prepared to fight, and he gathered up five smooth stones from the river, and he pocketed four of them, and he took the fifth one, and he put it in the sling, and he shot the sling, and he hit David rightly between the... Uh, he hit the giant right between his eyes and hit him right here, and he fell over. And he had him. And then David pulled his sword and cut off his head. I don't know why he had to do that part. And anyhow, and he became the Philistine prophecy. I would have liked to see him keep his head, but in those days, and we think it's bad now, huh? Okay. So, so then the army of the Philistines retreated quickly. Their champion was dead, and they were apparently ill-prepared to face the army of God. The army of God. What is the army of God? It's all of our angels. It's all of our spirit guides. It's all of that energy out there that when we're open to it and we're pouring our energy out, all that energy is coming back in. That's the army of God. So the Philistines were afraid to face the truth. The truth is God is all there is. 
See, these Bible stories, when you read them and dissect them, they have a lot to teach us. So David trusted more in God than the weapons of war. He knew that his battle was on behalf of the living God of Israel. So what are our battles about? I mean, obviously, we're not fighting giants today, or do we? Do we have spiritual giants that we are fighting and emotional problems today? The question is then, will you stand for God and allow God to do battle on your behalf? Are you willing to first step back, trust, and then hear in the stillness what it is that you need to do to move that one step forward, that next place in life where you need to be? So let's look at this again. When the strong man fully guardeth his own court, his goods are in peace. So I've got all of my, I'm a strong person and everything around me is guarded and it's in good peace. But what about if somebody that has a problem uh, comes and overcomes me? What about somebody that comes with all their armor and they want to smash my you know, my personality or my thoughts or my beliefs or, or my convictions, whatever they may be, then are we fully armed? We're only fully armed if we stand in strength, steadfast in stability. Does this make sense what I'm saying to you? Are you guys with me? Okay, great. So, and then divided the spoils. What does that mean? It means that the, uh, the, uh, Israel, ice went and they took everything from the Philistines and left them nothing. And what they couldn't take, they burned. I don't get that part either, but it's a story. <laughs> One thing you have to know about the Bible, and this is true, the Hebrews are great storytellers. So they embellish a lot. So the strong man fully armed. Think about this. We all have our armor encasing us. You know, anger, shyness, our defenses, our chips on our shoulders, our weight. We're fully protected against the outer world, but what happens when the outer world we feel attacks us? What do we do then? What happens when the stronger person breaks our armor? Without faith, we lose the war. Without faith, we lose the war. But if we're strong in our resolve of standing in our own truth and knowing that the outer world can only do to us what? What we let it, right? The outer world can only do. Nobody can take your power away unless you let them. I know I've let people take my power away, and it doesn't turn out good. How many of you have done the same? But when you stand in truth, thank you, Jules. When you stand in truth, when you stand in truth and you're resolved and know that you don't have to be in war over things, then we raise our consciousness. We gain strength of character, and we allow ourselves to be be stripped of, of all of the things that are not for our highest good. All true strength, then, comes from where? Oh, I, I forgot I have a new mic today. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> do you notice? Thank you, Jules. I have a new mic tonight. This is today. We're not bouncing all over. Thank you for that. So all true strength comes from the source, first cause. Truly, to live in a higher consciousness is to live a life of spirit. One must be strong in spirit. See, for the enfoldment then of spiritual strength, you continually will allow the presence to dwell at the center of your being. And the strength center actually is in the small of your back. And so what would that do? Strength, stability, steadfastness. Because when the small of your back is protected, the power there, what happens? Aubrey becomes six feet tall, and it's a great thing. So... Have, here you have support internally, spiritually. You have the strength of Ang Andrew. Being strong also means, though, being physically and mentally strong as well as spiritual. So this means then that life has to be in balance because if you're not in balance, you know, let's say you hurt your shoulders and you start leaning over, then you change the direction of your back and then your back is not supporting you. So you, to be in balance, then you need everything to be in alignment. And how do we do that? To be lived well, life must be in balance. And it's 
up to us to decide what we need and what we don't need. And I'll give you just a funny little example, which is not really a big deal, but on Sunday morning, obviously, I have to get here, and there's a time element of what I do. And today, uh, I kept hearing spiritual food. So I had a choice this morning, breakfast or journaling, reading, and doing my prayer book and my gratitude book. So I chose spiritual food today. See, when we're aware of what we need and when we're willing to listen to our bodies, that tells us I did not need anything other than spiritual food this morning before I came here. So would you feel your life is balanced if you lived with honesty, stability, respect, loyalty, consistency? Would these attributes guide you to be in more balance? Of course they would. So if you build on the first power, build on your faith, and then you add your strength to that, strength of character, be it spatial, physical, emotional, can you see how life all falls into a balance of oneness? From head to toe, the body needs to be in alignment. The mind needs to be in alignment. Your spiritual path needs to be in alignment. The moon is an example of stability. So it wanes when it must, and then it returns to full strength or a full moon. So the moon goes through all of these phases, right? Mother Nature then is always teaching us. And what she's teaching us about this is do what we must, but no, you can come back to full strength. The moon wanes, and then it comes back full moon, full strength. So we, it's not where, oh my God, I'm not perfect, or my life isn't running the way I want it. But in the meantime, yeah, we're going to work on all those things. You're going to work on all those things. But keep moving and going through the phases, and know that you continually come back to full strength because there is an army of God out there that is protecting you, that is guiding you, that is guarding you. Einstein, uh, Einstein wrote this, look deep into nature, then you will understand everything better. If we were to take all of the books and throw them away and live with the knowledge of Mother Nature, we would be a whole world of peace, beauty, and harmony. Our world is so beautiful and on the outside, but there's the stability that comes from the inside that allows us to appreciate the beauty on the outside. You know, it's kind of like this. Life is like it's a bicycle to keep you balanced. You have to keep moving. And so ends the lesson and so begins a very precious moment. And so it is.